So today I'm just going to run you through the process I use to make my thumbnails for my YouTube videos. The majority of the tutorial I'm going to be using Photoshop. I'm going to start out in Premiere Pro, do a tiny bit of adjustment in Lightroom and then finish it off in Photoshop. So if you've got the Creative Cloud suite, then this is ideal for you. But if you've only got Photoshop, then this tutorial is still for you. So let's jump in and I'll show you my process. Okay, so when you're making a thumbnail, you're going to want the best resolution images possible for your thumbnail, which in theory would mean for the main part of the thumbnail, you'd want a raw photo or something like that. Now, I've tried this in the past, and for me, it's more hassle than it's worth. I use a video still, and then I sharpen it up in Lightroom and do it that way. That works for me. Now, I appreciate that it's not the best way to do it. You should really get a nice high resolution photo, but for all the faff, I find that a decent sharpish still with some sharpening up in Lightroom does the trick for me. So, the first thing I do is after I film the video, so I've got the same lighting, first of all, I'll think about what I wanna be doing in the thumbnail. Now, for each of my thumbnails, I have myself in it. Now, I'm either using the product that I'm reviewing or I'm pointing to something. So I have a quick think, what do I want my thumbnails to look like? Now, for this one, I'm making thumbnails. Get it? Thumbnails. So, that's what I'm gonna do for this one. So all I do is I just sit there acting like an idiot for a few minutes, putting faces and making gestures. And I just realized here that I hadn't had it in focus. So you want to get the best focus possible. So then I'm just going to find the best still. Now that one's pretty good. You want one where you're looking straight at the camera. So now I'm going to export this still. I'm just going to call it pick one. Ventus. Now I'm just going to open Lightroom and I'm going to add my picture to Lightroom. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to one of my <laughs> other thumbnail edits and I'm just going to copy the edit settings onto this new picture. Okay, and now that's sharpened it up, brightened it up, I've just made it in general pop a little bit more uh, and that's good for me I'm just going to compare it with the other one just to check that they're kind of similar and they are so that's good enough for me so now I'm going to edit this in Photoshop so I'm going to go to file edit in Photoshop and now we have our picture opened up in Photoshop for us to edit so what I'm going to want to do, first of all, is separate myself from the rest of the image. I don't want any of this stuff in the background, I just want me. If you've seen my thumbnails before, it's just me, a logo, some text, and maybe a few other bits and pieces. Insofar as the background, I don't want any of that. Now, there's a couple of ways of separating myself from the background. Now, I could choose the object selection tool and just drag around myself and it will pretty much select me and then I can just go in, hold the old button and tidy it up. But I don't like to do it this way. I prefer to do it the other way. Now, the other way is a lot more time consuming, but I think it's more accurate and I don't mind spending a bit of time doing it. So you can do it this way, but I'm gonna also show you the way that I do it. So the way that I do it is I'm gonna choose my pen tool I'm going to go down to the sizing and change it to 300% just so we get nice and zoomed in. And yes, I am just going to go around and do this manually, which, like I said before, Control Z to get rid of what you've done. Like I said before, it is more time consuming than the other way of doing it, but I think it's a little bit more accurate and I don't mind spending the time doing this. In fact, I find it quite therapeutic. So, like I say, you can use the object selection tool. It's probably a bit quicker, but it's up to you how you separate yourself from the background. But this is how I do it. So I'm probably just gonna fast forward this for you as you don't really need to see me do the whole thing.
Now, obviously, black and black isn't ideal for this situation, but that's my fault. I've decided to wear a black T-shirt, so so be it. And this last one along the bottom should complete the whole selection. Okay, and as you can see, it's all gone blue now. So now we can change back to 100%. Okay, and as you can see, the whole of me is now selected. So what you do is you come down here, you go to paths, you hold control, click on this icon, and that will now select the whole of me. Go to layers, and then you come down to this little icon down the bottom, click on that, bang, and now we've made this little mask of myself. Next thing I'm gonna do is add a background color. So for this, I'm just gonna select the rectangle tool, and then I'm just gonna drag a rectangle across the whole of our image. Okay, now obviously that's now blocked out our image because this layer is now on top of me. So I'm gonna drag this layer to underneath me. Okay, and now we have me on top of this color. Okay, so some of you are gonna wanna use more funky designs. Now you can just drag in a picture behind this. Um, I'll show you how to do that now. Let's just find a picture, any picture will do. Okay, let's just use this one of the pier. So now we have this photo of the pier. If you wanted to use this as a background, we're just gonna select this by Control A. Keep your finger on Control and hit C that to copy. Go back to our other picture and then Control V to paste. It'll bring up this screen, click OK. Use our arrows to resize it. And now we have me in front of a pier instead. And that's how you would add a picture as the background. But for the purpose of this, we're not going to use that. So I'm going to click on this eye icon here to disable that layer. So if you want to get rid of that layer, you click on the eye. If you want to get rid of this layer, click on the eye. So you can get rid of whatever layer you want just by clicking on this. Now what I want to do with this is I want to do some adjustments on this color layer. So what I'm going to do is go down to the rectangle layer, double click, and it will bring up this layer style box, okay? And this is where you can make adjustments to this layer. Now, you can do all sorts of things, but what I like to do is a gradient overlay. So I'm gonna click on that, select the gradient overlay, and I use a blue one. So I go to the blue gradient overlays and find the one that I use, which is this one. Click on that, click OK. And now I have this like aqua. You'll have seen this in my recent thumbnails. I think it's quite eye catching when you put it with other thumbnails. Now when you're making your thumbnails, you want them to stand out. So choose colors that are quite vibrant so they stand out against other YouTube videos. But there's all sorts of things you can do to the layer. You can add weird textures, all sorts of things, okay? But for the purpose of this, I'm just gonna use a really simple gradient. Now, the other thing I change with this is depending on how the text works, I might reverse this. So if you click reverse, then you'll see the darker blue at the top, lighter blue at the bottom. Undo it and it's the other way around. So I need to see what the rest of it looks like first before I decide which way around to have this. So I'm gonna click okay for now. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a little bit bigger. So I can click on the layer here and then I can just stretch it out so that I am a little bit big. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put myself on the thumbnail yet, so at the moment I'm just gonna leave myself in the middle. But what I also always do to myself is, if I double click on the layer here, then I'll get the similar screen to what you saw before. Okay, so I always give myself an outer glow, so as you can see, it gives you a, a white edge around yourself. Now, I always use this just to separate myself a little bit more from the background. Now, obviously, it's a taste thing. It's up to you whether you do it or not. But you can then adjust this, make the size as big as you want. Give yourself a big old outer glow, or none at all. Right, but I keep it to, on five pixels, so. And play around with all the settings in here. You give yourself a bit of an inner shadow there, which actually looks quite good, but I'm not gonna use it. But. So if I wanted to change the color of the outer glow to red, and I just click on red, and uh, obviously 
it changes it to red. So I'll leave it on white. So that's all I want to do to myself at the moment. So the next thing I want to do is now I'm going to be making the thumbnail for this very video. So I'm going to want the Photoshop logo to go on it. So I'm going to go to File, Open and find it in my library. Okay, I'm just going to click Open. And this will open it on a new tab. So I'm going to Control A, Control C. Now it's a PNG file, so I don't need to cut it out from this image. I'm going to go to my picture and I'm going to Control V. Click OK. And there we go. Now we have our image on my thumbnail. Now this Photoshop logo, I think, stands out more with the darker blue, but I don't want it down in this corner because it's all a bit cluttered. So I'm going to either have it here or here. I'm going to go to the gradient overlay and I'm going to click reverse, like I said before. Click OK. OK, I prefer that to what it looked like before. OK, and I also think I'm a bit small, so I'm going to make myself a bit bigger. If you wanted to rotate yourself, then if you just hover around this bottom corner until the rotating arrows come up, then you can rotate. I'm not going to do that, though. The only other thing I really want is some text. So I'm going to go over to my text tool, click and hold, then you can change it to vertical type. But I'm going to leave it on horizontal type tool. Now I'm just going to click on my thumbnail and I'm just going to type how to make thumbnails. I'm going to split the text up into three different parts so that I can move them all around individual. I'm going to do how to make and then thumbnails. Click on the text tool again. I like to keep my text really simple. I always use this same font pretty much, which is Bowlby 1SC. Again, it's up to you. It's all subjective. I just want a really simple design that's going to stand out. I don't really want to clutter it up with anything else. If you look at my early thumbnails, A, they were a bit rubbish, and B, the text was smaller. You couldn't really read it. They were probably a bit too cluttered, weren't really thought out well enough. I just try and keep it simple these days. So what I might do is I might drag myself over here. And I move these texts down. Move that in a bit, that in a bit. I quite like that. I know it's really simple. I might move myself over just a little bit. It tells you what the video is about. I don't need to write in Photoshop because we've got the Photoshop logo. It's got me, how to make thumbnails, bang. Now, the only thing I might do, because thumbnails is clashing a little bit with my picture, then I might do something with this font slightly. So I'm gonna highlight this font. I'm gonna to go to thumbnails, I'm gonna double click on it and then we get this box again. So what I might do is give it a drop shadow. So if I click on drop shadow, then as you can see, it will make this little drop shadow, which makes it pop a little bit more from the background. So you can change the all the parameters on here, like so. I'll leave it on nine or 10. Click OK. I think I've changed this text and put drop shadows on those as well, just to make it look more uniform. So I click drop shadow on that one. And same with this one. Okay, and I just need to line that up again because it didn't. I like the way that the thumbnails falls where my thumbnails are. That was the general idea behind the thumbnail. And that's all I would do to it. So now I'm happy with it. I'm going to go to File, Export, Export As. Then it'll bring up this box. I'm going to change the width to 1280. Hit Tab, and that'll automatically change the height to 720. You want it 16 by 9, but for YouTube, you want it 1280 by 720, OK? And you just click Export and save it. And that's your thumbnail done. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. Like I said, this is just my process of making thumbnails. Other people would do it different. That's how I make my thumbnails in Photoshop. But however you choose to design your thumbnail, then that's the process you use in Photoshop to import pictures, use text, and change layer colors and all that sort of thing. 
is up to you how you choose to design your thumbnails. Let me know in the comments below how you make your thumbnails. If you're not already, please do consider subscribing to my channel. I'm releasing content on a Monday and Thursday at the moment, audio and visual gear reviews, editing tutorials, got an After Effects course that I've just started. It'd be great to have some new faces on board. If you're already subscribed, appreciate you guys. Um, just make sure that your notifications are switched on so I can let you know when new stuff comes out. But that's it for this one. Catch you in the next one.